What's up, mother birders, mother flippers? I'm going to be applying the stuff which I give you in this video, the, the sprain fire, directly after I filmed it. I just want to film it because I just want to spew what's in my head right now. We're going to be going into mental rocket science, so if you're an average idiot, then probably isn't w worth even trying. Wink, wink. Although I'm going to simplify it as much as possible and I'm going to start with this most simple way that I can say for well, this video and I'm going to, I'm, I'm deciding to go increasingly convoluted. Why is this the, why is this even worth theorizing about? This is worth theorizing about because of the notion that the stuff that you are consciously aware of is only useful for, you're only aware of what, 20% of the feelings and the decisions which your system uses in order to control your life. It is said that our systems are absolutely incredible machines for getting what we want. And nobody tells you how to pragmatize that phrase. I might just have put some of the final cogs together for making that useful pragmatic advice. And quite easily advice to apply. Like, Without this, like you go to the book The Heart of the Mind, which half explains the concept fully. Well, once you comprehend how your system works in the new linguistic programming way, if this theory does work, then it means that I've basically simplified all that you need to know about how to get a ton more resourcefulness out of yourself so that you can get a lot more choices and a lot more ease, a lot more flow in your life and basically any, one, anything you want because the theory applies to literally any meaning that you have for which it is the best, the most efficient, the easiest and the most fun to apply this principle on Things you really enjoy doing, like passions. Why? Because otherwise you're gonna find it's really damn difficult to take action on in the first place. Speaking from a guy who is uncontrollably surrounded by complainers at this point in time, like I've got, I've got a neighbor there, I've got a neighbor there, both old cunts who complain and they don't want to do anything about their fucking problems and I'm probably the only guy applying solutions here. Although there's a, there's, there's a good community group in the Southwold Canteen Southwold Library who love listening to me although I'm not sure how much they're applying. Was, let, let, let's just play this to Parker at first because like the, the like the, the the core part of this came comes from the book Heart of the Mind by Stephen Dress, who might not want to rely much on, considering that his past name was John O. Stevens, and that sounds like a bit of a scammy name. However, that the the, the solution in the book is called Phobias, Traumas, and Abuse. That's the chap's name. We're going to apply it, and we're going to apply the comprehension of it to make it useful the stuff that does not involve only acute responses. And by acute, I mean, say I just went and kept on sticking a thorn into your shoulder, and I did it very fast. If you, let, let, let's say you were in a light sleep trance and I went <laughs> and you went <laughs> that's an acute fight or flight response. The solution of the book is for solving acute fight or flight responses. 
the one in the, the, the example in the book is for a very severe bee phobia. However, we're not going to go through that because we want to use this for basically everything that we can imagine to either neutralize triggers or expose them or amplify them because we want to make life as awesome, as hilarious and as sexy as humanly fucking possible. That's what I'm about. So, so, the, the, the core part of this is can you feel, first of all, can you feel good for no fucking reason? If you can't feel good for no fucking reason whatsoever, in order to make the placebo response work, in order, basically in order to heal yourself and make yourself feel really good, then you're in deep shit, as David Steider tells you. <coughs> Which, I can't believe that a person who talks like a scammy salesman actually works ex excellently well. I, I don't, I don't believe it. So, this works based on the assumption that most of your options and most most of your choices in life are that they, they, they get generated without you realizing it based on how you feel. Here's an example of that. If you have ever written yourself uh, a horny story, then what you have likely experienced is that when when you get started off writing that story, at least if you have that specific addiction, then your system is going to go haywire using all of its creative resources to create as much options for writing the story as it can. And but and if and by feeling really really just really horny the 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 if you feel if you feel really horny and you want sex and your system if you think a lot is going to generate as much options and choices in your life as possible for coming up with ways to attract women. Your choices in this model, this structure of thinking, it assumes that your choices are mostly generated by what you feel like you want and how much you feel like you want it. And it's that simple. So, the, the, mo the most simple way that I can put this video is that if, you, if you're in this state right here for a certain situation, what other state do you want to get into for that situation? Do you feel intuitively like it's possible? The complicated way of saying that is, does your 20% battery remaining, I'm going to plug this phone in quickly so that I don't run out of battery as I'm filming annoyingly and please don't tell me that stops the recording no it does not so so if I want to get from this state right here then does my system have the resources that I don't realize are there for getting into the second state Say it's one of the Amy. Say it's, say it's one of my dream states. Say it's my confidence dream state, the state where I feel the most confident that I could possibly be in my dream situation, or could it be my lovingly excited dream state, which I call Amy's dream state? Would it be my optimistic op optimism dream state, which I call Sonic's dream state? Like I have this triad of dream states which I do Qigong with in order to, in theory, have life show me how to get into those states again 
perhaps with or without realising it. <coughs> so, the, th the, the, the basic theory there is if, and we're going to apply this to Parker in a second. I'm, I'm, it, I, I believe I'm going to video edit this to, to be 12 minutes long and just put it on YouTube. If I let, let, let's apply it to Parker right now, actually. Applying it to something that I feel really good about. If I'm in this neutral state, and I'm thinking about doing a near pitch black double side flip, I mean, a, a, a near pitch black spinning, I'm not going to spin the basketballs right now. And I, so I'm in this neutral state, monotonous state, and I think about doing a blindfolded side flip with two basketballs spinning on my fingers off the promenade because I want my dream trick. I asked my system, I asked myself, because asking yourself is asking your system. Can, how confident can I feel in myself to do the side flip? Can I, can, can I place a piece of paper down under my feet right now and one about a meter away from me? And can I get myself to gradually and in slow motion walk into my confidence dream state where I feel as confident as I can in thinking about how to do the thing and, for, and feel where any blocks to my confidence are which of which just because in, in parkour a lot of your success is just based upon your ability to feel confident enough just to commit to a move. I think a subtle reason why you want to do this would be to get rid of what's called perceptual clutter just in that no one on the planet seems to know what representation, what, what, what rules your system uses in order to behave throughout its environment based upon the sensory information it receives. Which means that if you rely on mostly visual information to judge how to do the side flip, then you're going to react differently, perhaps, than a person who derives most of their information from touch-based information does or based on sound. Like, do you derive most of your information from people cheering you on? That's a factor here. So, you're, so as you move through that meter of distance, generating as much confidence in your system as you can, 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 can you feel as if there are, or can you see internally, can you hear internally, maybe even taste and smell, if there were any blocks inside you, blocking you from feeling fully confident for the thing. And that's where things might get a bit more complicated, just because of the subtle aspects of psychology. For example, pretty much your entire life is determined in the first seven years of you being alive, which means that if you went into school during that period and you got bullied at all, then you may have some box to confidence which may be affecting you there. That society just tells you to stuff down. There might be these blocks which you could never consciously be aware of, preventing you from being confident enough to go for the move, and this applies to life in general, it's but to, to me it's one of the biggest reasons why the poor middle class gets stuck in the poor middle class is because I get shoved into school which blah 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 I'm not going through that in this video I'm going through that in this video so 
the point, so, uh, uh, if you go from monot that monotonous state to, oh, I'm, conf I'm really confident, as, as, as much conf as confident as I can be, in order to do that side flip, you go through that meter and you get halfway, you feel like something's blocking you. That's when you probably just place another piece of paper on the ground and all of this is based on intention anyway, like the energy world. The entire, the, like this is useful for the energy world as well, but since it's all based upon intention anyway. It, so. <coughs> that's when you start seeing if you can neutralize triggers that you don't realize are there. Which, if you can neutralize any triggers, then you should, without noticing it, get slash benefit in your system because of how perceptual filters work, which I'm not going to explain right now. It's not a. It's not a. It's not just a phrase. Of that you can or can't face something. Because there's something called psychogeometry which affects us all. And that if you are if you are able to fully attune yourself to yourself, if you're in the right state to do that, then if if you're if if you're faced with a fear so, 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 say face say so I'm facing at the camera right now and the camera represents a big fear for me, which it doesn't, although let's just pretend it does. Mm. And I am in tune with myself enough, and I'm looking for these things in my, these blocks in my system. And I don't feel like I can face a fear, I can get my system to make me feel what... Uh, just how much to turn away from the camera in order to feel safe with the camera even being there. And I can then adjust my feelings towards the camera enough to feel safer and safer towards it until the triggers that make me feel unsafe are neutralized. <coughs> And NLP phrases the next part really complicated. I believe I've, I've simplified it quite a lot. Like, like the, the solution in the book, Heart of the Mind, it doesn't really cover the full explanation of this. It, it's probably going to be useful to make to, to enable you to feel how genuinely good you can feel about something although I think my biggest uncertainty about it is specifically what it can do apart from like, like it said to cut out acute fears like a like a beasting phobia Although not the gradual ones, although the book does go through uh, how to batch. Basically, have your system leave lessons from dark experiences in the past, and leave the good ones in the present. Although, it didn't, it didn't work. I, I don't think it worked very well on me at all. Like, all this video is basically just theorizing. The, the only reason why I've continued with this is because I do notice a very big difference in Im imagining watching myself on a screen, basically right now, which I hate, and doing the exact same thing, but with me doing a parkour move, and that that's when I feel like, oh, oh I am an amazing person and I feel awesome in myself. <coughs> so, In order to understand this next part, you want to understand levels. So, so 
the next the, the next part basically relies on three things Th three four things and I'm gonna attempt to make this not sound like mental luck it sounds like mental gibberish because I've pragmatized again I've pragmatized all of this cut out the jargon in my head and I'm giving it to you because I hate jargon language barriers so first congruency how good can the, the the simple way of saying this is if you go into the a very high state of confidence with Amy Cuddy's confidence power pose, superwoman, superman power pose. Can you confident can you confidently say to your staff, I can do the side flip right now in a blindfold? For me that's piss easy, so I absolutely can say that full on, absolutely no issues. And I can say I am awesome in that blindfold doing a side flip. However, can I say that for loving my mother? It's a bit more iffy. If you can, if you can say something fully congruently in the confidence power pose, you're genuinely confident about it. If you can't, then then that's where you're using the your your rationalization to build up momentum in how much in how confident you can feel about the thing in order to come up with reasons for why you can feel confident about the thing and when you come up when you come off an insecurity high it's, it's like it, it it might be sad in the first place to just keep trying to hype yourself up although i'm actually putting it in quite such a pragmatic context that if my theory works then it actually could be it actually could prove extremely useful one of the points of this theory is so that you can expose the aspects of your emotional experience to parkour moves that automatically put you in a state of peak performance so that you can systematically access that state whenever you want at will. And so, even if you've just been knocked out by a truck, you can basically get back up and do the dream move you want, assuming everything's functioning well. And of course, I'm exaggerating there. In getting hit by a truck. If you, if you, if you just got a horrible night's sleep, you wake up, and you need to perform a dream trick. This thing, the, the, like what would you like to do if you could put yourself in a peak state of performance? The, the most peak you can be by accessing what's in your system, built into your system is always there, always has been. And you can just quite quickly hype yourself up into that state of peak performance where cogs just seem to click and you have a far higher chance of excellently performing that dream trick like I want to. And that is also going to be a state where everything is congruent. So you might want to check out first whether or not you feel fully confident in performing the trick in the first place using this. I can't, I'm, I'm just going through these theories in order to mentally cope with my current experience, which isn't... Uh, I, I, I'm just not... I, I'm just not in the right environment. Second, this is a technical fancy term, which once you comprehend the neurolinguistic programming matrix, which isn't the matrix to society and yeet. <laughs> like I've got, I'm currently sitting on this, I'm currently sitting on this exercise ball because to me it's better than a chair. Oh. <coughs> so, there, there, there's a very short video on the NLP Academy channel by John Grinder who came up with all the stuff in the first place called and he got some of this information from Gregory Bateson 
uh, on the unconscious conscious communication spectrum which your system and you can get your system to communicate to you via a placebo effect through how you feel specifically through your sense systems that's not that hard to comprehend it just means can you get your, can you ask yourself to respond to something in a way that tells you how you actually feel about it via a sound, a feeling somewhere in your body, or by seeing an image in your head. That's basically all it means. Now, I'm calling it conscious unconscious cooperation, not only because of the emphasis on you being genuine to yourself. That's what it, that's what it, it means. That, that's what that huge fancy technical term actually means. Unconscious conscious cooperation just means how genuine you, you are to yourself on levels you're not aware of. For which the idiot that you have to just get around in this is a fancy term called perceptual filters, which also applies to the energy world, which I don't think almost anybody knows. The fancy term for annoying, the, 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 the fancy way of saying energy block is annoying perceptual energetic filters, which you encounter in Qigong if you do actually have something really damn annoying mentally stuck in there that you weren't aware of. Although we're going to put it into quite a fun context in this video. So, and there's, there's another hidden detail of this. Un, so, unconscious conscious cooperation being another way of saying how genuine, how... how so what do you want to, how genuinely are you acting so that you are doing what you genuinely want to do at levels you're not consciously aware of? That's what it means. Therefore, like, uh, like as, as well as six step reframing, which they don't tell you this stuff, I had to figure it out myself, is also quite an emphasis on neurosis that they, they call it a conscious unconscious split, although it's really if you're if you're not acting the way you generally want to act and you're stuffing your emotions down, it means that you are divided from yourself. And then you systematize this division into parts of yourself. If you don't if you're not doing what you generally want to do just because pain is there and you are systematically moving away from what you generally want to do into this version of yourself that you don't want to be then those two are called opposing parts or contradictory parts Robert Diltz called it oppo contradictory parts of a belief system which can cause illness in today's world where, you, where I assume that most problems are just based upon intellectual reasons, i.e. things are just so damn convenient and we have enough fuel to survive nowadays, so people can just get wound up in their thoughts way too damn much and because their thoughts have the most power over their lives, really annoying stuff can build up to things like muscle pains really easily and even cause a lot of illness. So, one of, the as well, one of the aspects of this process, one of the really subtle aspects of this process, is getting around, it is building cooperation to the parts of yourself that you're not aware of through checking that the right feelings are there. And checking that the right feelings are there is to me the way of checking and building the options that you want to be there although in this case of getting our dream trick 
We want to reveal through our feelings and aspects of our emotional experience, subtle aspects of our emotional experience. We want to get our systems to reveal to us what we need to be in our emotional experience in order to systematically access our best states on command. Tony Robbins has a story where he did this, although he doesn't really, t although he doesn't tell you specifically how he did this. And if you'll help me, I'll get to it sooner, and I think I'm almost pretty much there anyway. <laughs> this, I'm, I'm almost at three videos for this video anyway. I'm not, tr I'm not trying to create multiple videos, although it's just turning into it. Uh, so after conscious, con uh, after how genuine you are to yourself, the biggest as the, the the biggest aspect of this, as I've alluded to, that the, the, there are two really damn big aspects to this, which you have to get down, which you have to comprehend, and I'm gonna try to make it simple. Is the process relies on you building up the feelings within your system for how you want to feel based upon what, what aspects of sensory experience are there. What that means is if, you, if you're relying on what you see in doing something, if, if I'm imagining myself doing a side flip, then how can I look at that memory in order to change the detail of it and make myself my, make myself feel more confident about it, and we're just I'm just focusing on confidence in this video just to make things simple. If I'm relying on my internal feelings about it or my external feelings about it, like how hard is my landing? Like well, once you put it, once you contextualize the term sensory experience. You can contextualize the technical term sensory assimilation to mean quite simple things. It means walk through what you are seeing, what you are feeling, what you are hearing in an experience in order to make it better, better or worse. Like run through it. If you're doing it on a park or line where you feel uncomfortable, what in your visualization makes you feel uncomfortable and how can you make it better? And the next, the, the, the next part I think quite amplifies visualization in a way that people don't tell you about, annoyingly, annoyingly. And this part also relies on how you're cooperating with yourself at levels you're not aware of. Because it's all about how connected you are with yourself and how connected you are to the pains that are present in your life and how the pains that are present in your life are interfering and blocking you from what you actually want to do. So, sitting here right now, if I'm out of my head and I'm only focused on talking to you, then I'm quite disconnected with how I feel in my own body unless something bespoke happens. If if I were, this goes into ways of viewing yourself inside and out, and we're not going to we're we're not going to involve mirrors because I haven't really used mirrors that much at all. I haven't focused on them. The exercise in Heart of the Mind for the phobia release is to go inside your head, imagine you're watching yourself on the cinema screen to like just take away the cinema. You're, wa you're watching this video on yourself up that's above you because of a visual behavioral wall and you're, you're adjusting how connected you are to that video of yourself by not only imagining yourself above yourself as being above yourself 
you also you also imagine that you go up on a projector. So so you you also way behind yourself, farther from yourself, about at the same level as the uh, cinema screen, and you are just you 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 put things in place that adjust your sensory experience, how you are seeing yourself on the screen, how you're feeling, how you are hearing yourself on the screen, and this is that this is where your feelings get a lot more important because. In in the, in this case, if I can, I I, th I think this is going to be a, like the internal testing lab for where your peak states of performance are, for how to systematically put yourself in those peak states of performance, where cogs just flow. Perhaps regardless of how much emotional baggage you are, this is where th this is going to be where the eighty percent. Of the iceberg is that's different from the twenty percent that you're consciously aware of. That so that eighty percent that's really controlling your life and is that phenomenal reality making machine, rather than a twenty percent which everybody just feels stuck with. This also would just make a lot of things way easier in life. It would make a lot. Of it would make a lot of stresses just go away once you get it right. Uh, especially in the time where we're so comfortable, we don't really live with any real fight or flight responses. I, like, any real fears, contextualize that we don't live with really any animal threats. And if you think you are living with real threats and you have never endured an animal threat, then get a reality check. Once you gauge, well, once you gauge, well, once you're able to get that comprehension, that the way of 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 adjusting how you are imagining sensory information, so. It, Adjusting what, uh, adjusting how you feel towards what you feel, see, and hear inside your head in these multiple levels because I believe that each time, so, so, say I'm imagining myself up on the screen and you can move that screen anywhere you want, it might just be quite useful to see it up there. That's the first level of disconnecting from the experience mentally enough to adjust how I feel about it. To fears, this makes things feel safer. And I can add another level of disconnection here. Although if you put, it, if you put that level of disconnection into context, then you get what, you, you get what Virginia Satir used to say and you, you get what she says in context, although once you go past the second level of disconnection, things get a bit that things get much harder to say in realistic terms, because the the first level of disconnection is basically saying, how do you feel about watching yourself on a screen? The second level is basically saying. How do, how do you feel about seeing yourself, watching yourself do this thing? And of course, then it gets a bit more convoluted because you're saying, how do you see yourself watching yourself doing this thing? Which is kind of like, what does that kind of even mean? Like, ask yourself how you feel about a feeling it makes a lot more sense. And, 
and according to the book people usually don't have to go past the um, sec second level of disconnection from a phobia if you put like Virginia Satir said what well, said that to people in real life anyway how do you if, if they're blaming if she's working with someone blaming someone else she often used to ask the person how they were feeling about feeling the level of anger inside of them. So a second level of disconnection there would, would be saying, okay, how do you feel in yourself, watching yourself feel that angry towards them? And if you put this into energy world terms, if I were to feel this energy board of anger right here, then I could uh, th then I could just disconnect from the energy ball, and just deal with another energy ball of thought over here. Feeling how do uh, how do I feel about even noticing that energy ball, and how can I deal with that energy ball? What options do I have available for me to deal with that energy ball? And and in that internal visualization, which you can get as which you can get more creative with than you can with the editor on your computer because everything's in your imagination, right? Although in, in today's times, I just think imagination is just being drained out of most of the people that I know, at least, except for me. If you combine, I've combined this with my model of viewing the transition states between my four custom layers of power poses, power gestures and movements. What does that mean? Virginia Satir on one of my layers for her family stress stances has four, her, in my model, in my way of thinking, there are four stress stances. One of them is what I call a transition state between each of them. The transition state is duh. The state that I assume people switch between every time they even just think about switching between these states without realizing it. Let's say, let's say when you get to person blaming, a person who feels worthless f f from the blamer and that worthless person that that, that, that that person just feels like they're tanking all the blame if those two people begin to switch roles then they switch that, that then one of them will go through the irrelevant transition state to feel like the stress just didn't matter switch to being more powerful than the original blamer and then the original blamer will say oh my reasoning doesn't, doesn't really matter that much and then they'll go into the really needy grovelly uh, i'll agree with what you say regardless of what you say state that's a transition state why is that important because your system has specific ways of rationalizing and making meaning consciously or not like with you realizing it or not no matter what situation it is you go through the same situations all the time without realizing it same situations and meaning the regardless of what culture you're in that it's dependent on evolution it it is how it, it it your system rationalizes stuff based on the environment it's in and how it's evolutionarily designed to act. Although that's most that that's mostly clouded up right now because of just the world that the, the insane world we're living in right now. So <coughs> the irrelevant transition state is. 
the most important state to me because it is very useful for basically rationalizing why to not care about stuff you're not in control over. And I believe that this entire that these internal I I the, the technical term I give it is internal perceptual positions, these internal ways of adjusting how you feel towards your experiences. Can really amplify the usefulness of these, of how these states are designed to make you act, because it is very useful to create very strong triggers rapidly to an experience that you've had, like for neutralizing fear. I bl if if you go ahead and experiment. Having a middleman, uh, having a middleman between you and the situation that you want to neutralize, say with the irrelevant stance that makes excuses for why something is irrelevant very obsessively and in an exaggerated way, then you just could feel a lot safer. Just acknowledging that the situation even happened. Although, let, let's say we used my knuckles confidence dream state, which is based. No, let's go with Amy Coney. If if we imagined ourselves as Amy Co as a superwoman. That is talk. That that is viewing the experience in front of us. Always talking to a person that we don't like. Or is about to do the move for us, and we adjusted our sensory experience in order to make us feel as good as as possible about what we're about to do. Then it could adjust things so that we have advantages that we don't realize are there. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering if there is anything more in my head. Please tell me how I can make your day. If I have already made it. And until I remember something else. Oh yeah. Applying this stuff on your own. I have to. Well, when I'm going through this stuff, I feel like I have to figure out specifically how to apply it to myself because I have no one else, sadly enough, who will do this work with me. Like, I, I, I just, I just think that around half the people in my area are just losers because they. A lot of the time I present solutions and I'm just coming up with all these solutions and they do nothing. They just complain about their problems. I hate it. That's one of the reasons why I just hate being here. Just, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not designed to be here. So, and John Grinder also commented on this too, is there is a massive incongruity in new linguistic programming practitioners. Like the, the new linguistic programming certification is just not worth a lot nowadays. It's worth basically nothing unless you have actually been trained by the people who actually knew what they were doing, which is the founders. If, if, if they even have useful stuff. Although I know the power pose are like quite useful for reducing fear and really making yourself feel feel good because I used it before my triumphant death gap, my my double basketball death gap because I gen I generated the feeling of confidence for no reason other than to make the movie easier and it reduced this cloud of clutter or feelings clutter here technical term for that is perceptual clutter of doing a thing like what well, why do you think doing it on the height is different that doing it on the de on the desk gap is different than 
doing it on the regular re regular floor. Y you could say the obvious stuff, the, the technical way of saying that is because of the, because your system sees the height and it also imagines feeling the impact. Imagines, so internal experience, feeling, so internal, feeling based experience, the impact, your system judges how how good enough your joints are in order to take the impact of the move. And it judges if you know that you have the skill and you have the confidence in yourself to do the thing. Like, on, like John Grinder's unconscious assimilation is, again, just an incredibly technical term and convoluted, unnecessary term. For say I'm at the death gap, say I'm at the death gap. My system judges what height I'm at, what level of skill, what level of muscle I have to take the impact, and all of that information compiles to give my system an internal feeling, this internal experience, which you can adjust with everything that I've said in this video to make me commit to the move. Why is this important? Because if the theory does indeed work, then you could remove a lot of risk. You, you could just go through a visualization with these levels of connection and disconnection towards yourself. And I, again, I did this to Instagram while I was in the show and it kind of worked. You, you, could, you could feel you could get a bigger comprehension towards if you are even going to be capable enough to perform a dream trick. That could reduce quite a lot of injuries if it does work. Tell me if I have made your day by being a smart ass. <laughs> well, smarter than the average person at least. And very pragmatic too. And I'll see you Mother flippers in the next video. Can I flip you? Because I, I, I definitely would want to just flip you in real life. I, I, I've, 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 I've front flipped over four people at once before. I've, I'm a terrible person. I have flipped over four willing children at once. I just never touched them once. I, I absolutely love flipping mothers. Like, I quit like like Christmas. That that there was a that there was an event in Southwold in Christmas, where I was the only person really doing anything worthwhile, as a tr as an event, an unplanned event. Got got a crowd, and I flipped this mother for her holiday to make her holiday. I make holiday dreams come true. I make holiday dreams come true. See you.